The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. Hey, Kara Ustros here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Pulse School episode, and I have here with me Ashley Smith, who is the brand manager for Inoculants Canada with BASF. How's it going today? Great. How about yourself? Great. So it's time of the year. We're starting to think, uh, we're, th- we're thinking about inoculants. Do you want to talk about some of the things producers should have in mind at this point of the time? Absolutely. It's We're getting to that time period now. We're getting closer and closer to spring. So inoculants are coming fresh off the manufacturing lines, made fresh and, and new each season. Uh, so we really got to remember when we're when we're handling and storing our inoculants, treat them as they are. They're living, breathing organisms, very different from our traditional synthetic chemistries. Uh, So our storage of how we handle these products is very important, uh, especially when it comes to storing and and keeping them in heated. Uh, Zero to 20 degrees is a great parameter to work with um, and and really try to control those conditions as much as you can to keep those organisms alive through to seeding. So what happens if you're not following these temperature guidelines, for example? What, What sorts of things can happen? So when you have temperatures that either get way too hot or, or way too low, you can affect the survivability of your actual um, organisms, the, the rhizobia and any other additional biologicals that are included in the products. Uh, so you can also, with temperature fluctuations, you can cause an increase or decrease within moisture. And each of these, especially at the granular uh, formulation, the products are formulated at a certain percentage of moisture when they leave the manufacturing facilities. Um, and that's in order to keep these these living organisms alive, alive through to seeding. Um, so if, if you get uh, conditions that cause condensation to build up or too much moisture, uh, you can actually cause more compaction as well as with packaging. Uh, and it, it actually cuts off the oxygen uh, for those with rhizobia. So is it recommended if you're getting them early, should they be stored in a shop? Should they be stored out in a like an outdoor shed or what sorts of uh, recommendations do you have that way? Absolutely great, great um, options. Um, as our products are hitting out into retail distributors now, they store them ideally in heated facilities uh, and making sure that they're not stacking pallets um, so you're not compacting any of the bags or the big bulk bags as well because um, that can squeeze out the moisture and cause them to cement and cause lumps and clumps within those bags. Uh, when you actually pick up your inoculants and take them on farm, keep them heated. Um, zero to 20 uh, degrees is best again, like I said, is is really trying to keep it as consistent as possible so you don't have those ranges of fluctuation um, of temperature that can cause moisture to build up as well. Now, how early can they be picked up? Is this something that, you know, we're sitting we're sitting in the, you know, the February, March area, or is this something that you can start looking at now, or do you need to wait till closer to seeding? Great question. When we look at granulars, um, they're already being produced as we speak. Uh, So there's products that are at your local retail that you can pick up um, that are available currently as they're coming off the manufacturing line. So if you have the ability to store them at home and you'll have your supply right on hand, ready for for you to hit the field early in spring, you can. Liquid inoculants are a little different. Um, They have shorter expiry dates. Um, So we produce them closer to season. Prime example are Nodulator XL LQ product it's going to be produced here in the next two three weeks and you'll be able to pick that up come april right in time for season so that we make sure that it's um, the freshest and most alive product we can so if producers watching this they're going okay great i know how to store this inoculant now but why would i use it really when we when we look at the role of inoculants um it's a best management practice product Um, We look at, especially for legume crops, they have that ability to fix their own nitrogen, fix their own atmospheric nitrogen and and create that continuous nitrogen supply for that crop through key growing points and and through pod fill. So by using an inoculant um, new each season, you're ensuring that your crop has an available rhizobia population that is competent. And, and by competent, I mean that it's designed to optimize and fix nitrogen, create that nodulation symbiotic relationship with that that prod or that plant, and so that that plant ensures that it has nitrogen all through the growing period. 
we have producers that are consistently growing pulses in their rotation year after year, and a lot are seeing a, a buildup of natural and native po populations in the soil. However, these native populations, they are designed to survive. That's how they reproduce. Um, they aren't as effective on the actual uh, process of driving nitrogen fixation and, and um, being able to pro or drive that process in the plant naturally. Uh, so that's why we always say is an annual inoculation practice is a breast management practice for pulse growers to ensure your crop has a continuous nitrogen supply in order to reach its optimum yield potential. And what you, you've talked about kind of the different, that there are different types of inoculants. Do you want to, is there any specific ones that work better with certain types of pulse crops or do, like, do you want to touch on that? Awesome opportunity to talk about what's really the best fit for your operation. Um, not only do we look at the strain of rhizobia, so I would say when you're looking at selecting the, the inoculant product for your operation, you're looking at, first of all, what crop you're going to be inoculating. Um, there is different strains that are more effective on different crops. Um, the strain that we utilize uh, in our nodulator du uh, duo, duo uh, product, the solid core granular formulation, it's strain 1435. It is highly effective and selected specifically for its effectiveness in nitrogen fixation for peas and lentils, um, where we also have a chickpea and a faba bean product that have two different strains within those products specifically for chickpeas and faba beans. So there is differences genetically in these organisms in how they can drive the effectiveness of nitrogen fixation. When we look at the next step of selecting your inoculant product is what's the best fit for a formulation for your operation? Are you set up to handle granular? Do you have that capability on your drill in order to run a separate tank with granular to put it in furrow? Or are you set up better for on-seed applications, um, for on-seed, so a liquid or a self-adhering peat? And, and really looking at what's the best setup for your operation. Also, if you're using uh, seed treatments, making sure that you have uh, products that are compatible um, because seed treatments being a fungicide base they are built to control pathogens and, and living organisms so you you need to make sure you adhere to the compatibility of an of inoculants with the specific seed treatments that you're utilizing as well okay great is there anything else you'd like to add i think the biggest thing i i really is the stewardship practices behind uh, what inoculants bring to pulse production. Uh, it's a best management practice that annual inoculation can really contribute to your pulse crops optimizing the yield potential year after year, but also the long-term sustainability of our rotational aspects of our cropping systems as well. Uh, so selecting inoculants that have the most optimum potential for, for fixing nitrogen, but also with formulations that are, are going to work the best for your operation and handling and, and handling and using them properly um, is that stewardship as aspect for biologicals. Absolutely, okay, well thank you very much, Ashley. Thank you.